in order to draw the conclusion that you use the word cost to describe tax breaks, you have to assume that the money isn't yours to begin with. That is pure evil right there. That I mean, that that is something you have to spend decades trying to break in terms of what the mindset that people have. Because you heard this all along the line. Whenever Trump talked about tax breaks, whenever he talked about streamlining the tax code, whenever he talked about reducing regulation or the corporate tax rate, the conclusion was always from the experts, this is going to cost the government a certain amount of money. Well, you know what? Tough nuts. Because it's not our job to worry about the government's budget. The government's budget, in this particular instance, is fueled by our money. This is our money, not the government's money. So keep in mind, words do matter, and the way that they actually do talk about this does matter. And I hope people are understanding what I'm saying here, but keep in mind, these paragraphs are hugely important. When young people, and Katie Bailey, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, to some, some, to some degree, sure. Okay. What but do you mean I, to some degree? I, I feel like I don't mean to sound like such a dummy, but maybe I would need it like a little bit more simplified. Maybe if you could just okay, yeah, just yeah. I, well, I don't know how I could simplify it anymore. But here's the deal: when you say that the government costs money, yeah, that, 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 that giving you a tax break will cost the government money. The assumption is. The conclusion is drawn that it's the government's money. Right. Okay. Because like, well, like when something costs Katie Bailey something, mm-hmm. right, that's an assumption that it's a liability for you, correct? Correct. Like when, like when you buy something, it, when you buy a pack of gum, mm-hmm. it costs you $1.50, right? Yes. So the word cost means it's an outlay for you. So the assumption here by saying that tax breaks will cost the government money is that somehow the government is being punished or the government is the one that's going to have to go through the pain. Okay. And the, and and by declaring that the government is going through the pain, you're assuming at that point that it's the government's money to begin with. Now you understand? Absolutely. So yeah. when you read this on the BuzzFeed or whatever it is you go to. Hey, I don't read BuzzFeed. Well, I'm saying though. <laughs> Wait, it's are familiar. You have to be familiar yeah. with it. Right. What what we're saying is when 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 people hear that though, it's built into that statement mm-hmm. that somehow it's not your money. your money. Right. And 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 you say to these people, tough nuts to the government. It's not my job to worry about what's costing the government this and what's costing the government that. The idea that somehow us being allowed to keep our own money is costing the government something is a twisted, sick concept. I mean, it really is. I mean, you're mentally deranged to to think in that fashion not not you as in you yeah. but but a, a but but a researcher or a reporter who reports a story like that is demented i mean there are people who there, there are people who are seriously mentally deranged to think that my money is the government's money and not my money correct okay and so to to speak in it so you have to watch out for this kind of language in the media because they're automatically buying into the concept that a tax break will cost the government something when, in fact, it's our money to begin with. So it's not costing the government anything. The government just have, simply has to adjust like we all have to adjust when we have financial liabilities, when we have a situation where we don't have enough much money coming in at a certain level in our life, we have to adjust. The problem is what the government does is instead of adjusting – for and 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 pain, painting themselves, they pain other people, which is why you get sick people like Jay Nixon who will go out there and stand at a school board meeting and threaten to cut the heads off of puppies if there's a tax break in the state of Missouri. You get that? I do. I'm sorry for making you explain it. No, no, no. Just... But these people and and these people, Katie Bailey, you're young. These people need to be run out. You talk about draining the swamp. These people need to be cleared out. Not only of the media, but also of the uh, of the Washington D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Talent. Oh, 
It drives me crazy when I hear tax breaks positioned in that fashion that it's going to cost the government a certain level of money. Well, Jamie, it's very important to have the right framework when you approach these issues, and that's what you're saying. I I think one of the framers said that the wealth of a nation belongs, in the first instance, to the people who earn it. And that's the right framework to approach this. And by the way, if any of your listeners Google that and the framers didn't say it, then I'll claim it for my own. Okay? Well, yeah, because it's brilliant. I mean, it's, it, the kind, it, it's the kind of thing that they would have said, um, and it's true. Now, so what's the right framework? The right framework is there are certain functions, as you know, Lincoln says, that the government should do because we can't do it better for ourselves. I used to talk about infrastructure that way, and Trump is a big infrastructure guy. I mean, you know, I can't go out and build a road, right? Uh, I mean that you need that that is a public good, and the government's entitled to take such taxes as it needs to fund the things that really do benefit the public. But it's the public's money in the first instance. It's not the government's money, and that's what you're saying. And you're right. And if you lose that framework, then that that affects in a bad way how you think about tax policy. Right. Which is why it's important to keep the right the fundamentals in place. Dick Armey used to say, and I. He was a great majority leader. He used to say, you know, when you're in confusion or in trouble, you go back to first principles. You go back and think about how you should think about these issues. And then you can start making some right decisions, which we surely need. Well, yeah, because because by by talking about tax breaks costing the government something, there's an assumption built into that, and and, and it starts from the the idea that it's the government's money first, Mm -hmm. yours second. And the wealth of a nation belongs, in the first instance, to the people who earn it. I mean, it's uh, and it, it, that's that's both right because they're the ones who went out and got it. But it's also the safest way to approach those questions. And then you you know you ask yourself how much revenue does the government really need? What's it spending on? The other thing that's important, Jamie, is for the government to start challenging itself to do the things that Americans routinely do. Now, I get this all the time in national security. It get, gets me very frustrated because I'll get on a panel. I was on three panels yesterday. And they say, well, you know, which threat is the most important to deal with? Well, that's, that's a good question in one context to answer. I mean, is there one that's clearly more dangerous than another? But the right answer is, look, can we ask our government to walk and chew gum at the same time? Is it capable of dealing with more than one thing at the same time? You know, Obama announced the pivot to Asia in 2011, and it was important to pay more attention to the Far East, okay? Obama! You don't pivot in the sense that you just ignore everything else, right? You deal with everything at the same time. That's what you have to do in your your show. Right. And and we should challenge the government to do that. When you you phrase the question that way, you're sort of implicitly causing people to think, oh, well, it's okay if the government only does one thing at a time. No, it isn't. Well, um, they need to do a bunch of stuff at the same time. I will tell you that I, I think I've determined that I know one, when you said that statement about the wealth of nations, yeah, wealth of a nation, I know, I know one founding father, I'm sh- almost absolutely sure it was not, who said that. And, and, and I, I, I know probably I can, I'll bet my house on the fact that it didn't come out of the mouth of Alexander Hamilton. I, you know, I don't know. Um, I, I'd be well. I'd, okay, I don't get my house. I haven't anymore. seen Hamilton and probably won't now. Uh, but well, you know what? But it, but I don't think it did because I've read th- a little bit about Alexander Hamilton. He might have. Uh, say, he was for, um, and I'm not a Hamilton expert. I bet you I am. get a bunch of calls from people who are. I he am. Was for, he, oh well, then you then you would know. I know. But I mean, my understanding of it is that he. He was for a much more centralized system right. than, than most of the other framers. Does that mean, though, that he was for a centralized system with high taxes? Well, I, I, he, I don't know that that follows necessarily. He was, and we don't need to get into it, but, but, but what I'm saying is he was a guy who, uh, the, the general welfare was, was misinterpreted by him to include just kind of everything that the government kind of decided would be. And Madison was like, no. It's only related to the enumerated powers of the federal government, 
And so they had a discussion about that, and so that's why I, I say that. that about Hamilton. That's unquestionably correct, that he wanted a central government, right, a much broader range and scope than the rest of the framers eventually agreed to. I Jimmy, think you're right. Jimmy Talent, you're the best, man, as always. Hey, thanks, man. Good talking, Good talking to you. Me. All right, see you later. That's Jim Talent, at Jim Talent, AEI.org.